Now, decades after the discovery of oil in Nigeria's Niger Delta region, conflicts around resource control continue. With Nigeria losing millions of dollars owing to pipeline vandalism, the country's federal government plans to meet with leaders and militants in the region to address, to arrive rather, at a solution. Now to discuss expectations from the meeting and issues around the conflict, I will be speaking to Udengs Iradiri, president of Ijo Youth Council. Thank you so much for joining us, Udengs. Thank you and uh, hello viewers. Now let's start off from the very beginning. Um, what do you make of the crisis in the Niger Delta region? Well, the crisis as uh, we are experiencing now is self-inflicted because uh, before today uh, there was peace in the Niger Delta region. But uh, don't also forget that not too long ago uh, we had elections in Nigeria and that led to a change of leadership. That change of leadership saw a Southerner who, uh, in the person of uh, Jonathan, uh, leave power and handed over to uh, President Muhammadu Buhari. Before uh, this incident, the Niger Delta situation had been there for over 50 years now. This neglect, which came as a result of the amalgamation between the South and the Northern uh, Protectorate, as it then was in 1914. Uh, the people's consent was not sought before the people were brought together. And that have led to the conflict still today. You have had this suspicion between the various ethnic nationalities that uh, uh, have found themselves in the Nigerian space. But you see, going forward, successive governments have tried in their own uh, efforts to resolving the issues of, of uh, distrust between the Niger Delta and uh, the leadership of the country. And at, at a point when uh, things were really getting tough. The, when the mode crisis started, President Obasanjo began by engaging stakeholders, just like what is about to happen tomorrow. But uh, obviously, they, 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 they engaged in various, in different ways, which led to results that, uh, that we saw practically. President Obasanjo started coastal meetings. He brought governors, the stakeholders, the community leaders together under one roof in the villa, uh, the presidential villa in Abuja. And in that meeting, you could see where youths were coming to accuse their governors to say 13% derivation that they have collected, they've not been able to expend it judiciously. And you saw the president at that time, you know, accusing governors to say, Your people have, have come to say you are not doing this. We want to, in the next three months, see that we have achieved this milestone. The development agencies, especially the NDDC at that time, will come up and roll out its own um, um, roadmap. And eventually, the president was giving them timelines. And when we, 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 we left that meeting, we were going back to look for, you know, pitfalls to come back and report to leadership. That led to a process that eventually was carried upon by uh, the late president, Yaradua. In the Yaradua situation, Nigeria's oil output from 2 million barrels got to about 700,000 barrels. And the president, as sick as he was at that time, sat on the table, brought the people together, and then eventually the amnesty was proclaimed for those who were involved in the conflict. In that discourse, they agreed that while young people who were bearing arms will be rehabilitated and re-injected into the society, other committees were set up to look at the issues that bordered on development, the environment, and all that. But in Nigeria, everybody is interested in the oil. And so the attention and focus was now on the amnesty. And immediately, arms were mopped up from young people. Everybody saw that from 700,000 barrels, the, or the flow got to 2 million barrels. They forgot about the issues of development, the issues of cleanup of the environment that were on the table at that time. That now led to the uh, uh, President Bo um, uh, Jonathan, who came from the region take over power. And when Jonathan took over power, he engaged the people and continued in that manner. But immediately this administration came in to bear by uh, 2015, everything changed. And before the administration came, there was this clamor for a sovereign national conference. Eventually, there was a national confab that held where all Nigerians came together to discuss and a document was reached to for the way forward for Nigeria. Because as Niger Deltans, we believe in the Nigerian project, but we believe in a fair and equitable Nigerian project. That process, Nigerians met 
during the last administration and came up with a document in the National Confab uh, as the report wa was then. When this administration took over leadership, we had congratulated the leadership and said that, look, begin from the National Confab because that was an opportunity for you to say, let us uh, heal all our wounds and then take off from there. But six, seven months into the administration, things started to change. Mm. Yeah. First of all, the Maritime University in the Niger Delta that came as a result of the peace process uh, during the Obasanjo era was uh, suspended. Secondly, they started pursuing uh, perceived Niger Deltans who served in the last administration. And all that frustration came together and then eventually some youths decided that they would take... Uh, to, to, to the agitation that have led us to where we are today. All right, then. Now, Udengs, let we, me... have we have been calling on federal government mm. to address the issues with sincerity. Mm. But in recent times, we have seen the president come up to say the people should come together and let us discuss. And we are in Abuja hoping that that discussion will come to the table, especially on the part of government, with all level of sincerity that we eventually see a better Nigeria tomorrow. All right, Udengs, let's, um, let's take things um, you know, a step back, just the way you've done. You've tried to to build a sequence from the very from the very beginning. Now, you did admit that um, under President Odisha Gwambasanjo, you did admit that the crisis in the Niger Delta has been on for over 50 years now. Um, you admitted that under President um, Obasanjo, of course, a meeting was held. Youths did come out and call out on their leaders who were not performing in that region. Now, that, in, you know, of course, you know, did not end the crisis. It may have resolved it to, to an extent, but then it didn't mean that the leaders went back to put that region together. Under Yaradoa, we said the amnesty program as well. Um, he had meetings, he had discussions. My question is, calling out these leaders on what they haven't done in terms of development in those regions, uh, has anything changed? Have you seen these leaders go back to their people and bring some form of development in the Niger Delta region? Just want to just answer that before we go on to the next question. Well, well, you see, um, you see this issue of leaders and accountability for 13% and all that. For, for today, uh, we have seen it as a blackmail. These institutions in the first place were not designed to uh, f um, uh, deliver for the people. Let me tell you, everything in the Niger Delta have been fought for. Even the states that were created. Uh, General Gowon had to create states in the Niger Delta because he wanted to douse the tension for creation of states as a result of uh, inclusion that the people were agitating for. The NDDC itself was created as a result of agitation. Bayesa State was created as a result of agitation. The amnesty itself came as a result of agitation. And so, anytime you force an oppressor to get something, they always pick it from the other hand. Mm. We, we keep wondering, how come NDDC that was set up to address the issues of development in the Niger Delta have never had a clear-cut leadership? Anytime somebody contests an election and fails the election, they will use the Niger Delta Development Commission and all sorts of agencies like that to compensate for, for politi political uh, patronage. And so you find out somebody who lost an election in the ruling party, this has to do with both APC and PDP. If he loses an election, he will be compensated with, with uh, a, a developmental board. Knowing fully well that so much money goes into that board, it means that the person goes in there, he wants to fill his pocket, or he used the board to prepare for an election. Mm -hmm. So from the word go, the designers, maybe uh, deliberately, did not want those institutions to succeed. Look at the Niger Delta uh, governors. Why is it that it is always very tense when it comes to elections in the Niger Delta? Everybody is interested, whether it is a, an APC or a PDP, it depends on who is at the center leading the country. That's, Everybody wants to grab the oil-rich states um, Udengs, because Udengs, there is very... always money well, that's a very important yeah. point you raised there. I, I know, and that's why I asked you earlier if anything has really changed. Okay, let's, let's, let's address it this way. Um, yes, the federal government has its own part to play. But then, um, like you, you mentioned, of course, um, the ethnic rivalry we have in the country. Um, yes, Nigeria is united on the front, but there are those who, of course, who believe that deep down there are deep-rooted differences. Let's assume that's the, the situation at the moment. But then we have governors who come from these states in the Niger Delta region. 
governors who are accountable to the people, governors who have what I call the state's resources at their disposal. Uh, how much are the youths in that region doing to demand accountability from these governors who are supposed to be bringing development to their region? It's, you just mentioned now that, of course, there's a clamor for political offices in the Niger, uh, Niger Delta region because most of them want to fill their pockets. And sometimes I ask and I say, is it, um, is it what you call misguided agitation over the years? Are the youths really um, addressing the real problems? Are they really going after those who they should hold accountable? Or, or is it a misfire? Let me tell you, you know, the state is a very power insti powerful institution. Mm -hmm. These. Uh, the, this, when you leave an error uncorrected, it will lead us to intellectual immorality. Mm. For the fact that Nigeria is a nation of ethnic nationalities, the people did not partake in the process that led to our constitution. Does our constitution actually defend the rights of the ordinary citizen today? No. Until we go back to the basis. And that's why I, I mentioned the national comfort. Mm -hmm. That that could have been like a soft landing because it saw every facet of the country, irrespective of north, south, east, or west, coming to the table to decide how we will move forward as a nation. If we do not get that basis right, we will continuously see this kind of divide and rule situation. Mm -hmm. I was coming to a point when I said every um, um, political party that leads in the center will always want to grab the, the states in the south. Why? Because there's usually so much money that comes from those states to fund party activities, irrespective of who which party is, is, is leading the country. So everybody wants to make sure that it grabs the state in the south because there will be excess funds until the people begin to decide who becomes their governor. Until the people begin to decide how things happen in their locality. We will never get it right. And you don't think the people are playing a role in determining who, who their leaders are? You will also agree with me that during the last election, let me pick a state like River State, for instance. During the last yes. election, there were reports of um, you know, intimidation um, by youths and militants who have actually been paid by these same politicians. Now, these same people, or some of them are the ones who still turn around and fight for or like on the put up a front of asking for development in the region, saying, you know, um, the money that we, we, we deserve is not coming our way. We do not have bridges in our rural communities. But they're the same ones who are being used to support, should I call it, would you call it the wrong leaders now coming into power? Or supporting these politicians who you claim coming to enrich themselves into power? They're all part of the game, wouldn't you say? Yes, I agree with you. Look, because of the negative, the, the, the negative um legacies of our failed system we have we have we have gotten to the point where they impoverish the society so anytime any little funds is put on the table you always find young people that will come and grab it and do their bidding what we are saying is that we must have a, a, a nation we must have a country we must have a constitution that protects every nigerian so that with that kind of a constitution you will realize that we will take care of the issues of employment. Once the people begin to determine how things are done in their environment, then we will have leaders who will come and do what is right. And once we have that, you will hardly find young people that will come and take peanuts and begin to be talks to politicians because the, the system will guarantee employment for, for the people from the region. Because you are, how do you explain an oil company coming to do business mm -hmm. in the Niger Delta and yet all, right. all his staffs are coming from a particular section of the country. Mm. It's because there is no laws in the constitution that guarantee the people of that environment right. to benefit from those things that come out from okay, there. Okay, Udeng, so you're going to have to hold that thought and let's just take a quick break. When we return, we'll continue with this, um, with this discussion. I've been speaking with um, Udeng's Eradiri, um, president of Ijo Youth Council. Still on our focus on Nigeria's Niger Delta region, Udeng's Eradiri, president of Ijo Youth Council, is still with us on the program. Um, now, Udeng's, of course, before the break, we were trying to make a point there, but then... There is a meeting we're going to be expecting um, the federal government and uh, militant leaders and leaders in the Niger Delta community to have on Tuesday. Um, part of the issues that are going to be discussed, of course, is the cleaning up exercise. Now, while the federal government is on one side is planning to clean up um, oil spill in the region, we have militants blowing up the pipelines on the daily. Is anybody really winning at the end of the day? Well, you see, there has been a, a, a high level of mistrust between the people and government. 
tomorrow's meeting is about uh, a, they say it's a central working committee so that uh, in that floor the presidency will now set up their own team we don't need all that i just explained how president buhari uh, president obasanjo in his time called everybody to the table and then he started listening from everybody what is your what is your problem what's your problem but here you are after nigeria have lost over three trillion we're still talking about a committee that will see the president tomorrow that will not spend more than uh, 30 minutes and then everybody goes back you go back and start setting up a team again it, there's a lot of mistrust in the process look at the ogoni cleanup issue till as i speak to you now no no work is being done on site but this is uh, a process that was widely celebrated that the government have, have yeah, marked 10 billion dollars they will begin to the cleanup of the region and it's over a year now nothing is happening so why, do, why, is, why is anything lost. happening are the youth no, you stopping that, it or the federal government hasn't taken a step no, at all? You, you could see that the Niger Delta people celebrated that uh, uh, pronouncement by the uh, by the, the uh, President Buhari when he said that he was going to clean up Ogoni. Mm -hmm. We celebrated it. We, all, we were all dancing, expecting that uh, it will actually go the way they said. But as I speak to you, almost all the partners are pulling out because the, the, there's no budget designated for that uh, purpose. And until now, nothing is happening. And so people have lost confidence in the entire process. The Minister of Environment has been visiting that, that region. Well, what has she been saying? What has the, the outcome of the meetings she's been going there for? You know, what has she been saying? No, you see, once funds are not allocated for a particular project, you can there can be all manner of rhetorics around it. Once the funds are not there, there's nothing anybody can do about it. Mm. The point is, government must begin to match action with words just not too long ago uh, the petroleum ministry launched its seven big wins where they talked about investments in the oil and gas sector and the niger delta they were, they were going to earmark 10 billion dollars to f to develop the region for a period we are still watching because we are yet to see where that money will be coming from because if you are going to be earmarking $10 billion, you don't just say that donor agencies and oil companies will bring that money. Mm -hmm. When we know that what is even existing, they have not been able to do their own contributions to meet up their obligations. Mm -hmm. We were expecting that government will say, okay, with the sales of oil, because of what is happening, a percentage will be earmarked. Just as in the uh, Northeast development, they are saying 3% of uh, VAT in the entire country will be earmarked for that purpose. Right. You know specifically where the money is coming from. Now, Udengs, but uh, in this case, it's about rhetoric. Okay, now Udengs, um, we have a, a militant group that's actually blown up um, some pipelines today and are threatening to blow up more, um, you know, if the, um, the Edwin Clark faction of the, the group coming for that meeting, if, if it comes through, they are saying they do not want Edwin Clark's faction or group or Pan-African-led team, whatever term you, know, you call it now, to be a part of that meeting. Do you think by blowing up more pipelines, um, their demands will be met? Is that the way to go? Well, you see, uh, Nigeria is such a, co a funny country where people need to go to the extreme to be heard. I just told you that uh, we came from a situation where people had gave a lot of confidence to this administration and expected them to engage. Yes, but now the, the government is but, planning to have no, this long-awaited dialogue. Why, why still blow the, up more the, pipelines? The NDDC, no, let me come. The ND, we are talking about confidence here. The Niger Delta Development Commission that is already an establishment, establishment of law existing for to build confidence is underfunded. The Federal Government Amnesty Program that had over 30,000 young people engaged in that process that saw 2.2 million barrels of oil flow for six years have been underfunded. And a lot of all these young people are on the streets. The Niger Delta Ministry is not funded. And so they are not even constructing the East West Road as we talk. So if a government wants to show confidence in the people, is it not normal that you start funding those existing institutions that you have to build confidence? But in this case, you are talking about talking with the people, and yet the one that is before you, you are doing nothing about it. No, but and so a lot of people have lost confidence, Udeng. and there's proliferation of a lot of institutions right now, mm -hmm. and groups coming up to, to agitate in various ways. 
No, but then when you talk about the situation being funny, let's also talk about the situation here. Um, of course, um, the media is awash with all sh sorts of stories about corruption and past leaders who, of course, uh, laundered money belonging to um, the, um, the citizens of this country. And now, whenever you know anyone, a former leader from the Niger Delta is picked up, you have protests in the Niger Delta, um, Niger Delta region. You have youths who say, why pick on them? You're not the first um, you know, to, to make away with the country's money. Um, you're witch hunting. Um, you know, rather than support the government in bringing these, um, um, you know, these accused persons to book, and rather than demanding that such money be retrieved, you have them on the side of these leaders on the grounds that they come from the Niger Delta you know, region. So I ask myself, you know, if, if, it's, um, if, the, if the person who is, would I call it, responsible for your predicament, um, you know, has been exposed and you stand by this person to support their act, you know, I, I say to myself, so who are the youths to call on the federal government for not helping them? No, no, no. I, I, you see, uh, Nigeria is a very complex place where uh, everybody wants to protect his own in the first place. The first issue is this. Are you actually sincere about the process? You cannot be keeping certain criminals within your cabinet and then you, if you holistically look at what is happening, it's like all those who were in the former administration or the former uh, party are the ones that are being pursued. While once you, you, you cross over to the ruling party, then you are immune from uh, any uh, prosecution. Mm. What we have always said is when you want to prosecute criminals or you want to arrest, let it be holistic. Do not shelve a group of people because they belong to your party or your ethnic nationality and then begin to chase the other. All of us are unanimously resolved that we must fight corruption in this country. But fighting corruption, we must come to equity with clean hands. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you cannot say that because you suspect that there was corruption in uh, procurement processes, you shut down an entire university. And yet, oh, there are over 50 universities in this country that are funded from monies that come from the region. Why don't you deal with the issues concerning corruption and allow the institutions to flow? But when it gets to another part of the country, it's like anything coming from the south will be dealt with in a different way, while things coming from the other part of the country will have some level of uh, levity when dealing with them. When you come to equity with such hands, then uh, the people are bound to, to react. And that is the kind of reaction that have come from a lot of groups from the region. Well, then, when they discover you. that you are treating it with uh, uh, different gloves. Mm. Okay, let me ask you this final question. What do you think will end the crisis in the, crisis in the Niger Delta region today? Do you think it's the government, um, you know, starting again with this amnesty program and ensuring that money gets to everyone? Or is it about bringing infrastructure developments to the Niger Delta region? Which do you think will resolve the issues? You see, the problem in Nigeria has been failure of leadership. That's why Coco disappeared, the granite pyramids disappeared, tomato not too long ago was disappearing because we didn't, leadership was not prepared when the epidemic came to, uh, to, uh, to address those issues. What is happening in the Niger Delta, the, mid, the uh, iPod and other areas is failure of leadership. And that's why we have said to resolve the problems, we must go back to the basis. Let the people come sit together and decide whether they will continue to live as one. And if we must live as one, then it must be on the basis of fairness, equity, and justice. Anything that we are doing, including the meeting that we'll be holding tomorrow, it's just about window dressing this situation because you satisfy a group of people who have seen all what they are doing now. You satisfy a group of people, well, the next generation will come up and say, no, uh, you have done your bit, we will continue. Well, but when you address it from the root cause, mm -hmm. you will find out that everybody will take ownership of how his development will, will, will the pace of now, of his development in his end. Uh, just, um, just in a nutshell, if I understand what you're saying very well, you're saying neither amnesty or development will end the crisis in the region. You want the federal government to listen um, to the outcry, or I call it the plea, that the region stand alone, or that if the region no, will not stand alone, we need to restructure revenue allocation? Is that what you're saying? We need to restructure everything that concerns governance in this country, not just revenue alone. Okay. We need to go back to the basis. Our constitution did it really carry Nigerians along? If it didn't, the religious issues and all that, let us sit down and redraft our constitution. For the first time, let Nigerians come and decide 
whether they will continue in one right. nation as Nigeria. And right. going forward, must be on the basis of equity and justice. Fantastic. Amnesty will never solve the problem. Uh, $10 billion and all that. You know Nigeria, once they set up a process, before you know it, this same syndrome of corruption will creep in and it will be business as usual. Well, what we are saying is, let every region reorganize itself. We're going to have to end it. Of his development. We're going to have to end it on that note. Thank you so much. It's really been very interesting getting your view on the proposed meeting and issues around the Niger Delta region. I've been speaking with Udengs Iradiri, president of Ijo Youth Council, on issues in Nigeria's Niger Delta region.